up? What up? What up? What up, guys? It's your girl Q. And a. Hey. And welcome to Cold Press Knowledge. Welcome to CPK episode <laughs> four. You know, we, yo, hey, we four months in. I know, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, y'all, I want to, okay, I'm going to, I want to give y'all, before, before Zarya tries to call me out, I'm going to go ahead and go give my public apology, because she told me she was going to call me out. I, I'm going to get to this later, but it, it has been a, 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 a lot going on these last few weeks. I know it's been exactly one month since our last episode aired, and it is only still on Facebook. But I promise, uh, after this episode, <laughs> I'm gonna get. Uh, I am. We gotta. I had to have a talk with our uh, our media manager, which is me. Um, and so we gotta get. We gotta get our. We gotta get our stuff out. Like real life, it was Azaria who had to talk with our media manager, which is me. And uh, so. We're going to get episode three is going to get uh, with JD we had last month, which is great. We're going to get that up on the podcast sites and then also on YouTube at a, a cut version. And then after this, we finish recording this one, it's going to be up too. So I just wanted to go ahead and throw that before Zari tried to throw me under the bus because I know she was going to do it. No, I wasn't. I was actually, Kiana, you know, I love you. I was literally joking when I said those things. <laughs> I was. I don't even know why you told the folks this, because I was literally joking with you. All right, well. You told on yourself, though, but okay. <laughs> I, I mean, like, everybody know. People have been asking. The folks have been asking, and we will deliver. I will deliver soon, because, but, because we got to make sure tonight's episode gets out there. I'm going to make sure it does. So once I'm going to cut them all, they all going to go up at the same time. Everyone will get a nice little notification. So make sure you like and subscribe, subscribe, like, comment, the order, however that goes. Y'all know how it goes. Um, but yeah, so, but, so tonight we have a fantastic guest and a very, very, very important topic. Um, and really, before we get into all that, make sure y'all grabbing your drinks. Go ahead and get your drinks ready. We're going to get to what we're drinking in a second. Um but we want to go ahead and just take this time on the day after the passing of the Honorable Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, also, she died on this, she passed on the same day as uh, the Black, National Black Vote Matter Day. Um, and the day before this, before this, like we didn't, like the, the, congruency of this topic and what we chose for this month and and what has uh, unfolded in these last few days is just it's clearly it's a sign that is something we all need to talk about but we want to just take this this moment um, and just talk about some of the things that honorable our RBG did for us and so Izzy's going to go ahead and, and let us know some of those amazing things and yeah take some so time for um, I, I think it's very important that we talk about the things she's done, which has been many things. If even if you just Google her, Google her, because especially like our generation, sometimes we don't know the impact that people have. We know just in our circles, people continuously say that you know RBG and my cousin is like really loves her, and I literally just bought her a whole bunch of things um, representing RBG. But a lot of people just know, oh, she's for gender equality. But a lot of people don't know that she actually helped um, with the right to sign a mortgage without a man, um, the right to have a bank account without a male co-signer, the right to have like a job without being discriminated based on gender, um, and the right to be a woman who's pregnant or a woman that has kids and the ability to work. So we really just wanted to highlight some of the things. Also just do some re other research to find out the things, how impactful she was in her space and the importance of her role in which she served um, our Supreme Court. And we just wanted to take this moment to send condolences to her family mm -hmm. and, um, and know that they're in our thoughts during this hard time. Yeah. And I think, and I think that right now, even for her right now, her passing and the possibility of her passing was on the minds of so many people in a way that really only affects us in a, in a political way. But we also have to just like, just take pause for her, her life, just for her life as a human on this planet. Um, 
and, and in this space and, and the things that she went through as a woman uh, in America, in the world, and just, even, I, and, I, and everyone has read and seen when she, like, she was hoping that, that, she, that her position would not be filled until the next president um, was appointed. And it's like the fact that she, the way that she's thinking about the end of her own life and thinking for the, about the future. So like, we just need to go ahead and let her rest, her Honorable John Lewis and all the others who, who came before them who knew that they wouldn't see full change in their life. And like, y'all can rest now and understand that it, it, in the, even in this conversation we're gonna have tonight that we need to pick up the needle and continue to push it forward and not, and not having someone think on their, on their, during their last breath that like, I hope that I did enough. It's like, you did everything. And now it's time for, now it's time for the rest of us to pick up. So that's what, so that's what tonight's about. We just want to just take that time because even, even when I first got the news, I was like, oh my gosh, the first thing I thought was like, he can appoint someone else. And it's like, that's not where we need to be. That's not where our thoughts need to be. Um, we need to, we need to pay respect to, to all that she did. And, 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 and in, the, in that moment. So we just wanted to kind of give time for that this, this, this evening. I almost said this morning, but not this morning, <laughs> this evening, y'all. Um, okay, I, almost, I, got a little in, I got a little into it. I'm feeling a little, whew, a little emotional. Gonna get my, <clears throat> get my bass back in my voice, you know what I'm saying? Oh, all right, but so tonight, um, so tonight we have a great guest um, and we are going to, are we checking in first? How are y'all doing? Who's out there? All right, we got a few folks. Oh, yes, yeah, see you on Facebook, okay? We got a few followers out there. How are y'all doing tonight? Let us know in the comments how y'all feeling. Um, make sure you have your drinks ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our guest. So our tonight's guest is Miss Judith P. Finellis. Dedication, passion, and tenacity characterize Miss Judith P. Finellis Born in Miami, Florida, but raised in East Orange, New Jersey, Ms. Finellis is the proud daughter of Haitian immigrants. Ms. Finellis attended East Orange High School and later matriculated at Ramapo College. Upon graduating, she moved to Washington, D.C., where she worked on various political campaigns and on Capitol Hill for the late Congressman Mayor Major, jo Major Owens. Sorry. Today, Ms. Finella serves as the Chief of Staff to Assemblywoman Shavonda E. Sumter of the 35th Legislative District. In her capacity as Chief of Staff, she manages the staff and day-to-day -day operations of the office. She also advises on various state issues and policy development, directs communication and coordination on behalf of the Assemblywoman. She also directs in governmental constituent and community re relations for the office. In addition to working with ASW Sumter, she serves as a political coach, a political coach, as a political coach, Ms. Finellis assists potential and current candidates with their campaign and strategy. So without further ado, we want to go ahead and bring in Ms. Finellis. Hey, let's see, where's she at? Where's she at? There she is. Hey. hey. You're muted. Unmute, unmute. There we go. There we go. We can hear Hi. you. Hey. Let me mute this. And then. How's everyone doing tonight? Yes, we are doing great. How are you? I'm absolutely fabulous considering it's 2020. <laughs> considering it's 2020. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah. So what we do with all of our guests is, and we're going to ask everybody in the comments too, so hope you wouldn't grab what you was drinking on. What What are you sipping on tonight? Uh, tonight, I am sipping on a caramel latte with almond milk. Yes, from Duncan. Yo, I miss Duncan, guys. <laughs> I really do. I do. I drank like three uh, caramel macchiatos like the day before I left. I was like, let me just get these in because they're going to taste just like this. So I feel you. Oh, man. And it's, and it's warm. It's a hot drink. It's a hot drink. Yeah. Hot I'm drink. cool I'm in New Jersey. We're, we're, we're having a, a real fall this year, actually. Ooh. 
it's happening. Already. I agree. We're having a real fall in, in PA too. I'm drinking tea, girl. What I'm drinking I? honey, um, ca- caramel, peach tea. Oh, caramel peach. Okay. Like that. That. With water or milk? With water. Okay. <laughs> That's the thing. That's a real question. Don't don't come for me like people don't drink milk with their tea. Did you guys don't drink out? Yeah, they really do. They do. That's a thing. Considering you come from a island colonized by Yeah, the we did. We used to drink tea with milk. Yeah. But it's say, not for me. <laughs> Us French colonized <laughs> islands don't do that. Exactly. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. I felt like that was a very genuine question for someone who's <laughs> I know, also, I know. also sitting sitting in an island that's still that is still that is still British territory. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh man! So you gonna ask me? What are you drinking? What are you drinking? <laughs> thanks for thanks for inquiring, friends. Oh, so okay, everybody oh, knows yeah. I've already, I've already had this before, but I thought it would be fitting to actually drink a Barrett's ginger beer here in Bermuda, where it is made and then imported elsewhere. So I'm drinking tonight a non-alcoholic. Azaria, Barrett's ginger beer. So yeah, okay. this is what I'm sipping on tonight. It's in a can. I usually have the glass ones, but I couldn't find the glass ones in the in the in Lindos. Lindos is a grocery store. That's a first. Right. I know. But I'm going to pop that open. Okay. Okay. What else? What y'all in the comments? If y'all got something in your cups, go ahead and let us know. I can see y'all here. We can go ahead and chat. Uh, but okay, so Judith. So yes. Judith. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we both said at the same time. So usually we ask our guests, I guess just sometimes like sometimes to introduce themselves, but we already introduced you prior to you coming. So we if we do that, we have a question. Okay. So our question for you is if you could put one policy in place to change the world, what would it be? <laughs> Around the world, honestly, if I if I could put one policy around the world, it would probably be um, reparations for all people of color who has suffered at the hands of colonization, imperialism, and all the isms. So that would probably be it. Yes, yes, reparations yes, for president. <laughs> <laughs> president okay she got my vote. she's got it thank you thank you okay so okay so so with your answer how do you feel about some of these smaller cities that have been putting toward putting reparations in place when it comes to like housing discrimination and things like that i know the city of ash asheville north carolina um mm-hmm. over the summer put a bill out to 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 kind of give rep- to give reparations to families and and people of descent african descendants of color um so do you think like that implementation, what they've done, I don't know if you know too much about the, the, the policy itself, but like, do you think that that, that, that is a step in the right direction? Um, would that be yeah. your answer? It, it is in a step in the right direction. So what, what it also shows is that, you know, different level of government can um, provide um, reparations. So, of course, because it's a municipality, it can talk about housing, but it can't do, you know, the overarching things that the federal government can do. But it is definitely a start in the right direction, but would love to see something on the federal level and internationally for that matter, because, you know, I, 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 I'm of Haitian descent. So um, the confusion for some would pro- some people may feel as though I know some people do feel this way that because my parents are from Haiti we don't deserve anything from America per se um, but you know France Por- Portugal uh, England you know all of them Belgium you know they they all should be it, it they all should be paying a cost yeah like and I and I think and I anytime anytime I think about like. You know, you know, like that map of colonialism when you see all of the arrows that show you where they took everybody, all that mm-hmm. money needs to reverse all the way back to Africa. So like yep. go ahead and give every all the descendants and then make sure you give back to the mother continent that you yep. literally raped and took everything from. So go France, like you said, France, Portugal, 
United States, England, Spain, et cetera. Go ahead and just yeah. start. Yeah. And, and as far as Africa, just get out. Because they are still there. Literally. Yeah. And, and, you know, and we're, we're witnessing a second colonization of Africa, unfortunately, with China, um, you know, that people may not know. Um, and so that, that, that the, the country has the resources. That's not the issue. Um, we just need people to get out. And I think um, until, and this is just my personal opinion, until Africa is strengthened, um, black people around the world may not be able to um, stand strong as as they should and can. Azaria, <laughs> remember the day? No, when I remember that day we went to the. We went to I the know. Lake. What did I say when that day we went to the lake? I know you said the same thing. I okay, said, I know. So Kiana's probably just trying to be like, we're in alignment. We're in alignment. <laughs> It's true. I no. I I I. Yeah, was, I said that. That came to that came to me. That came to me like as like a vision. It was a weird feeling that I had, but it was just it was just the same the same like picture that I just that I just depicted that I kind of wrapped up like the fact that it needs to go back. It's like no, like like all of us need to continue to trace back these steps as individuals, yep. as countries, as whatever yep. it is, and it has to go all the way back because until. Until we fix what happened there, and that, and that, and and, that, and I'm thinking about it, and I also just started. I read, I was listening to um, James Baldwin and Margaret Mead's conversation, the rap on race, and where he kept saying, she kept saying, "You're not individually responsible." He's like, "I know I'm not individually responsible, but we're all responsible." And I think people keep missing that very important point. Um, we're all responsible, yeah. um, and so, and like in that same way, it's like I, I didn't. I, as a black woman, haven't done anything personal that I think, but it's like, it's also my responsibility to make sure that what I'm doing is giving back to where I come from. Yep. And I think, and me coming here, where my grandmother was born for me is like that first step um, in certain, so many ways. So like, there's just, there's just a lot. Um, so I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and reel it in. But <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of what we, what we need to do, let's go ahead and get into this topic yes. about voting and, and, and the black vote. Um, and so our first question for you tonight, outside of that, it made, that was a reparation. That was a great answer. That was fantastic. That was just going to be a little, a little, a little joking question, but you really, you really out here coming with the, with the <laughs> stuff. Um, but how did you yourself get into politics and, and why? Could you so, um, the intent was never really to get into politics. I, I, I wanted to do policy. So what happened was, um, I went to a predominantly white institution. Um, Rampo College, as you know, and I was the um, first Black student to be elected to the Board of Trustees. And there was an issue um, that came up that would impact Black men. Like, it, 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 was, it was there. And so I was like, working, you know, trying to get the professors to talk against this, trying to get the students to talk against this. And, and you know, it was so funny because um, it was basically um, banning like St. Eyes off the campus and stuff like that, which we knew black men drink more than our, our white counterpart. Um, and so I felt as though that was just a way to kick more black men off the campus. And so, uh, you know, I, I got more pushback from black professors, but at the end of the day, they, um, yeah, um, they, they, they took it off the agenda. It was no longer a policy. And, and that was just a, a moment in time where I was like, wow, if I wasn't there, this policy would have changed. We don't read the entire handbook um, when we, every year when we go to go back to school. And it, it would have neg negatively impacted black men on our campus. Um, and so I, I vowed that I would always be at the table where decisions would be made but even more importantly, before the decision or the decision gets to the table, I wanted to be part of the policy making so that we make sure that the intent right, of, of, of that policy does not negatively impact us. So that's how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's, and it's, wow, that is, 
that's that's something because we don't even like like you said you don't read the handbooks you don't really know what's going into what policies are being driven into your schools you kind of just you follow the basic rules you try at least try to and then hope that hope for the best but like if if you weren't at that table right i, I can only imagine i mean at and it was it was specific malt liquor it was very specific um and so you know that's that that was like all the bells was like okay are you targeting <laughs> it's so targeted right so um and like i said no one goes to school and read the entire handbook to realize what what cha what policy changed from year to year um and so that 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 was the driving force for me that's amazing. I didn't even know. I didn't even know that that policy in, in in higher ed could change from year to year. It also feels it always it also it always seems like something that's fixed. Um, I mean, like a lot of things that we're dealing with at, at our university is that well, we can't change this like though this because of this. They always make it seem like it's like this fixed thing. They kind of want you to believe that it's this fixed thing, mind you. They're no. pushing out new things. Yeah, that's why we have a board of trustees. And I, right. I, you, you know, student, if, you know, if people would empower themselves to go to these policy making um, meetings, right? I, I, I encourage every student, if you're on a college campus, you go, because that's where they sit down and say, I, we're going to increase your tuition. Exactly. Right. And they're able to do it behind closed doors because no student come, no student shout, no student scream, no student complain. Mm -hmm. And so next year there's a two thousand dollars tax onto your bill and you're trying to figure out how to pay for it. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, back in May, you could have went to the meeting and everyone could have said, listen, it's, you know, we can't afford two thousand dollars. Like if you're going to do this, then you, you all need to have an endowment that looks out for students who can't afford this yeah and, and and let your voice be heard but we don't we don't go to you know these policy making bodies and, and and stake our claims and half of the time it's people who do not who do not come from where we come from yeah you know last time i checked Renfro had an all-white board yep that's usually what it is. So, so how can you speak to the issue of the student who come from an urban setting, who's hanging on by a thread, who, you know, all the family members had to come together and get the bed sheets and get everything they need. And, you know, that's just for freshman year. Come yeah. sophomore year, everyone's not putting together to get you the sheets to make sure you have food and give you the gift cards and Walmart and Target. Yep. You know, that was a one-time celebration. So what happens to that student, right? And then, you know, with, with state aid, you know, once you get into your junior and your senior year, it's less money. So how are we focusing on those students and helping those students? That's why, you know, colleges always have issues with retention. They can't relate to those students. Yeah. And I it's agree. important for people like you and I to say, I want to sit on the board, submit your resume, let them know I, you're interested. Oh, I have, I, 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 I actually attended a board, board of trustees meeting this summer, um, still sending emails of trying to be a, a student um, member or they, they started, um, they're supposed to be trying to get like a board, like a sep or separate organization or committee to go along with the board to like be able to talk to like what's being pushed forward. Um, mm -hmm. Still sending my email to figure out, have you guys made a decision yet? So I, I am I am trying to push in that space. Uh, I will not say it's been easy, um, but but no, yeah, but I'm trying to get in there. Wow, oh man, okay. Is it, I, I think what um, Judith said is very important because on campuses is where movement happens mm -hmm. a lot of um like a lot of policy change and and i want to say movements happen on college campuses um just looking back historically so i want to move into our second question for you judith um okay. so kiana has been the victim of voter suppression in the past i mean <laughs> yeah like twice um, <laughs> she's mailed in things and you know they really just it was just a real arduous journey for her to like. Yeah, and they're trying to get me this time, but I'm I'm saying vigilant. 
I'm staying vigilant. They're trying to catch me. Please stay vigilant. Because you you vote in Pennsylvania. We need all the votes we can get in Pennsylvania. <laughs> exactly. I so I will say, so I I my home state is Arizona. And I will say that state also needs all, yes, of the votes, all the votes. Which is why I could even I, even though I live in other states, I continue to keep my Arizona residency so I can continue to vote in that state. And that is where I was a voter, a victim of voting suppression two times in the two uh, presidential elections. So I somehow got lost and, or I didn't, it wasn't sent on the right day or just some things that didn't make any sense. And it's hard when you're like not there to then right. get stuff back after I'm like, how, did, how am I just getting it back? If, if you didn't get it, how am I just getting it back months later? Like this is a lot, but, but yes. Yeah, so, so what? So we're interested. Uh, so our question is, sorry. Yeah. All right, so the reason we constructed this question, we just wanted to know what's been your journey as a Black voter? Oh, I've I, I never had any issues. Because <laughs> I think when you're a consistent voter, it, you know, you don't have those issues. And I've, I've only been out of the state of New Jersey for three years when I was in Washington, D.C. And so, you know, when I came back, I changed my status and everything. So I really never had an issue. But when you're a consistent voter, you don't have um, that many issues. It's the people who don't vote regularly, right? If you're voting every four years for just for a presidential election, what tends to happen is if you skip one or two, they kick you off the rolls. Um, so that can be an issue. And, you know, some place like the state of New Jersey, there's an election every year. Um, your even years, there's always a congressional uh, uh, race. And then your odd years, there's um, the state legislature, the assembly um, office is up. Uh, uh, and that's, you know, in between your presidential, that's in between your freeholder, your county level government, that's in between your municipal, um, um, the municipal government also. Um, so New Jersey, every year there's an election. So um, if you're a consistent voter, I think it, it, it's harder. And then if you move, make sure you know you um, make those changes also and make sure that they have your information. I think sometimes the onus is on us to follow up, especially right now you know, um, in the state of New Jersey, we're doing vote by mail. And um, so if you have not voted consistently or if you didn't get a vote by mail app, um, ballot this past uh, July, follow up, call your county clerk and make sure that um, you get your vote by mail. And that's across the country. You have to make a plan to vote this year because we know, we know that they are planning to um suppress the vote in certain areas. We know we've seen it. We've seen it in a primary where people had to wait four hours, six hours. You know, I believe it was in Georgia where they had to demand that they reopen the polling place because they were trying to close it um, before people got the chance to vote, even though they were on online. So we have to make sure that we make a plan to vote, whether it's by uh, vote by mail, for absentee application, I know, you know, 45, uh, 46 minus one keeps trying to make it seem like it's two different things. It's the same exact thing. Um, so you have to make a plan, whether it's, um, you know, going into the polling place in the state of New Jersey, um, there won't be any machines, but you can vote provisional ballot. So you have to know those different things. We have ballot boxes. Um, across the state that you can um, mail in or if you don't trust the United States Postal Service, if you feel as though they're not going to get there, or they have early voting. So you can go to your um, um, to the um, county clerk's office and vote there also. So you have to make a plan and know how you're going to vote and know what the states require. So it's important that, you know, everyone get on their county clerk's, secretary of state's website and figure out what are the ways that are afforded to you in 2020 to vote, you know, because, you know, the pandemic has kind of threw a loop um, in everything. So what, what are the ways that you have? And, and you have to make that plan right now to ensure that you're able to cast your, your, your um, vote and that it, it's counted. Judith, you are so knowledgeable. I wrote all of that down. Hold on, okay. So, <laughs> for, those us, for those of us out there, I'm going to go ahead and say me included, because I, I will say I've not been a consistent voter. Um, 
I turned 18 the year that Obama was going up for his election. That was the first person and thing I ever got to vote for. And then I left the state. I wasn't living in the state where I was voting. So for me to kind of keep up with those things, it, it didn't happen. Um, right. And then I've moved around a lot. So really the presidential election is all that I've really paid close attention to because I've moved so much. So like for those of us who are really trying to get our lives, what are just like first three steps like step one, step two, step three to one, get ready for this coming up. And then to make sure that we are able to be consistent and moving on with our voting journey as we, as we, as we progress into this, into this space. So the first thing is either go on your secretary of state website or county clerk website. Okay. Right. And, and, and it should provide uh, what they call voter information. Um, and so if, if you are, um, if you are like not sure of your status of whether you're registered or not, just register again. Mm -hmm. But you have to know your um, registration deadline. So in the state of New Jersey, it's October 13th. Um, so figure out what that date is. Sub submit your ap um, application. Some people do it online. In the state of New Jersey now, we can do that. But you need to figure it out. If it's something that you can walk in, I would prefer you just walk it in um, to the um, superintendent of elections or county clerk, depending upon the state, um, walk it in so, so that they have it. Um, and, and then from there, just start checking to make sure that they have registered you and that you are on the roll. Then it's important to know where is your polling place? Because okay. one of the things that have been happening to suppress the vote is that they'll change your polling place mm. two days before, you know, you, you, yes, yes. They'll change your polling place without providing you the information. So here you think you're supposed to be at school five and then um, you get there, there's no signage, there's no information to tell you that, you know, um, there's just, this is no longer a, a polling place mm -hmm. that you have to go somewhere else. So make sure you know exactly where you are voting. But again, it's important in this, in this time of coronavirus that we understand that, you know, some states are doing all vote by mail. And so if that is the case, to make sure that the address that they have for you have been updated, that it's going to come to you oh. where you are at, Okay. Okay. Make sure it's coming to you so that you you will receive it, um, and and it's not going to Auntie House, and you don't get to Auntie House, but you know every three months, gotta make sure, or you're going to your parent house and you know you're no longer there. So make sure all that information is updated. Wow, that's really good. Right, and I'm then so. So once so once you know you're registered, once you know um, you know they have accurate information or what have you. So if it's vote by mail, you can you can vote from from home. If if you're going to the polling place, just make sure you're checking and making sure that your um, polling place haven't changed. I would even check the day of online to make sure that they have not moved your polling place. Um, before you go vote, if you're going to go uh, vote um, uh, physically. Okay. So our next question for you is, why does it feel like the Black vote is only important during presidential elections, um, whereas any other time we feel like we're an afterthought? You know, again, because I guess because I'm in politics, um, the, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. And, and, and here's the other thing I will say. Um, when it comes up to voting, right, remember, someone died so that you would be able to vote. So it, it, it is like, you know, self-esteem. You got to love yourself. And part of loving yourself is voting your issues. And no one should make you um, have to feel special to, to go vote. That should just be innately in you because of the blood that was shed so that we can be afforded the opportunity and the privilege to vote. It should just be innately 
in each and every one of us because that's where change is made. Um, I think that people pay attention to the presidential election more than any other election. And that's why they may feel that way, right? Because you have, you know, how many people know what a, what a surrogate does? How many people know what the county executive does? How many people know what the freeholder does, right? How many people, so there's these different, um, um, you know, elections that we're, we have not educated ourselves in. So I think what has happened is that people just slide right in because, you know, they know we're not paying attention because we only pay attention during the presidential. So we need to do a better job of paying attention to every level of government because the, the, the smaller the government, meaning starting from the municipal to the county, to the state, to the federal, the lower you go, the closer it impacts you, right? So what the council and the mayor decides to do will impact you more, you'll see it, it's tangible. What the county government will do, it's, it, 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 it's closer than what, you know, state law or the federal government. So we need to pay attention to each level of government. We need to pay attention to, you know, where our taxpayer, tax money is going, right? You're, you're a taxpayer um, and at, at all these levels of government receive money from your hard-earned paycheck um, to make some of these decisions. And so if you're not okay with some of these decisions or you feel as though quality of life you know, trash is not being picked up, recycle is not being picked up, the tree is dying in front of your house, and uh, the road needs to be paved, or you need to get a speed bump because they act like it's the Audubon. You know, all of those issues, right? Your county parks, what does that look like? Social service, when you talk about county government, they provide all the social services. Um, so what does that look like? Are they providing it accurately or or do you feel as though, you know, your community is getting the services that it needs? Um, and, you know, when you get to the state, all of the policy that's being made um, on a state level and, you know, federal government, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, I get what people are saying when they say, oh, they feel as though people do not come to them um, or they feel as though it's the presidential. But part of it also, is that's the one that people really pay attention to for some reason. You know, on, on our off years, um, when when in, in the state of New Jersey, when the, it's, it's, it's not a gubernatorial race, let's just say the assembly is on top of the ticket, we is 5% of the population vote. Of the whole population, just yeah, five. in the state of New Jersey. Wow. So it's not so, even just like a, a black thing, like what we don't, it's like more of like a, it's like a wide range of folks who don't pay attention People do not pay attention, right, right. Okay. And when you're not paying attention, you know, people wreak havoc. Yes. Okay, so we want to, I want to go ahead and, and come into our last question of the night. So um, you, you told us a lot about, about what the community knows, needs to know about voting, um, but specifically, why is the black vote important? to 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 moving the needle forward to to this movement why is the black vote important in specifically well historically the black vote has always been important in tipping the scale um you know um when when kennedy and nixon um were running um you know historians said you know historically blacks prior has had always voted republican so Martin Luther King was in jail. And so um, Kennedy um, supposedly called um, Coretta Scott King to make sure everything was okay. And so that took the scale. And I got that information from um, the late great, um, oh my God, I forget, I forget the civil rights um, leader because he was Julian, Julian Bond, great late Julian Bond, because I had a class with him, yes. Um, Yes, 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 yes. And, and so he had shared that story. And, and so, so that's, that was the tipping scale. And, and from that point on, black people had been voting 
Democrat. Because, you know, people are always like, oh, we've been voting Democrat all of this time. They ain't doing nothing for us. You know, it, j learn some history. Um, so with that being said, we, we have always been the group that has um, tipped the scale. And, you know, in the Democratic Party, you know, Black women are the backbone. We are the backbone of, of, of the party. And Say it again. We are the backbone and we continue to save the day. Um, you know, I forget what state, you know, they almost put a pedophile in the Senate. Um, but we came through. Yes, 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 yes. What, what y'all clutching pearls? See, you say like, yes. We, we, what? <laughs> we get, uh, Doug Jones is the senator, but I forget what state. Um, it is. Um, but yeah, we. They almost put a pedophile in 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 in, in the Senate. Um, and so now, you know, we continue to be the moral compass of this country and we continue because you know we we understand what is at stake right um when when white america catch a cold black america catches pneumonia and and we we know what suffering is we know um how policies have impacted our community right we went through the um the crack era um, heroin and and we we see we saw that there was no no lifeline um thrown to us like it is now right we you know they they have racialized um they have racialized you know crime right so we see how our how our brown and black boys and men are being thrown in prison for nonviolent offenses um we see how our daughters when they go to school they're more likely to be suspended, more likely to be treated as 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 ch troubled children. Our our boys more more likely to be um be told they have ADHD and 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 you know put on the spectrum and all this other stuff. So we continue to see how policy impacts us negatively, and we continue to you know save the day. We continue to try to. Um, get our brothers to to go vote right uh, you know when men were given the right to vote black men were given the right to vote and black women still couldn't go go vote you know um history showed us that it was black women who was holding their guns ensuring that they black men would be able to vote because you know back then you know ku klux klan would suppress the vote they would make sure you couldn't vote they would through intimidation um so we 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 are the backbone of the Democratic Party, um, and so that's why we see you know Sister Kamala Harris as the vice presidential nominee. Um, you know this election is not about personality. This is not American Idol. You don't have to like the person. Where we are at now in this country, we are literally fighting for the soul of democracy. And if you um, think that this is policy you know oh you know it's the same thing over and over again no we we have someone who is who has authoritarian tendencies and what that means is that he will continue to break the the crack democracy in this country until he 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 stands as a dictator and that's is that is what we are trying to prevent because if he can get the supreme court so that they can vote the way he wants them to vote they get they can decide whether or not he gets a third term you know these are the things that people because he's already saying it he's like you know I, I'm, I'm going to negotiate for a third term what president have you ever heard said I'm going to negotiate for a third term you get your first term you get your second term and you move on that's what you do um but he he's he's speaking it as if this is this there's precedent in that you know, this is something that we do in this country. You know, what we do in this country is follow the constitution and follow the law. But he is he has shown time and time again that he believes he's above the law and he can do whatever he wants to do. And and we have to understand what that means for us when he uses terminology like law and order and saying that he's gonna come into these black cities and, and take over 
utilizing terminology like martial law. You know, I think people don't understand what that means. That means I will come and I will take your stuff. I will take your property. Yes, that's what it means. That's what it means. It, there's, there's no way around it. it there's no sugarcoating it. That's what it means. So we need to put someone in the White House who at least respects the laws, who we can at least have a conversation and say, these are the problems that our community is facing and that we, we want you to be a partner with us. He is not a partner. He is not a partner. He is not a partner to Black people, Latino people, people of color, people of, uh, of different religion or women. He is not a partner. Um, and so we should really take this election seriously. Tired of people saying, oh, Biden is not it. Well, listen, you only got two choices at this point. There's not, you know, I, I, you can, a vote to a third party is a vote for him. That, that's how the math works. That's how the math works. A vote for a third party or a no vote is for him. And he, has, and he bragged that in 2016, a lot of black people didn't come out and vote and that's why he won. And, and so they are relying on, on you to be cynical about this election. They're relying on you to be indifferent about this election. They're relying on you to, to, to really not care enough to not vote. They're relying on it. And if you think your vote does not matter, why are they trying to suppress it? If you think your vote do not matter, why did they gut the Voting Rights Act? They gut it so that they can close polling places, so that they can close DMV in our area. They didn't do. They didn't do it in the suburb. Or they did it in our area, where where there are predominantly black and brown people. So you know, I just just read a little bit about our history, and you'll understand. Historically, historically, our votes have been um, suppressed whether it was is when we didn't have the right to vote, when they said we were three-fifths of a person, when they started saying, oh, we're going to give a literacy um, test, we're going to do a poll tax that we couldn't afford, a literacy test. When you walk up there, they change the questions on you to trip you up just so that whatever you study, you wouldn't get the, you wouldn't get the answers. Historically, they've always suppressed our vote. literally like a history lesson uh, uh a push for like i this thank judith thank you so much for this conversation it was a much needed conversation thank you for all of us um i and i got a notebook notes mm -hmm. taken down i hope you was taking notes y'all grab your notebooks i hope you did because this is information yep, we all need we're going to make sure we put this um, in the comments. Make sure y'all know the steps that she gave us as a people to continue to to push the needle and to make change because it needs to it needs to be it needs to happen now more than ever. And if you if I never voted before, well, guess what? This is the first time we can all get up this time and, and get it done and we can continue to grow and learn from it as we all move forward. That's for all of us. So Judith, oh. thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you Before for you having go, me. Judith. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before you go, Judith, we usually have our guests um, leave with one, I guess, maybe impactful quote or sentence that you want the audience to remember you by. Wow. I was, um, <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have asked you to have something prepared. Uh, a quote or uh, anything? No, like it's Shelly, it text me something. She always got all the quotes. Um, um. So it could just be something wrapped like from this whole conversation. Like it could be a call to action. It could be just something you leave with the audience that you want to say. So so okay. So so charge. so here here here's what I here's here's what I will say. Um, whatever is important to you, it is on the ballot in November. So if it's education, if it's mass incarceration, if it's if it's if it's um, housing, um, if it's a job economy, it is all on the ballot on November third. And 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 if 
your life is has been better since 2016 well kudos to you but if 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 you feel as though that you're not doing as well as you should be doing or um things are not moving the way you want to, it to move especially college students like you shouldn't be getting out, out of a four-year college with a hundred thousand dollar debt like i i i I don't know how do we say we want an educated society and we don't make it affordable. Um, and it, so millennials, Gen Zs, all of you should be voting for that if nothing else. It is all on the ballot. So remember that whether you vote or don't vote, just remember you're either voting for your issue or you're voting against your issue. Look at, look. That right there, you didn't need no one else. That was all we <laughs> needed. I feel empowered already. <laughs> Thank you so much, Judith. We really Thank appreciate you. It. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love this. <laughs> all right. So we're going to say. Great night. Thank you so much. And we're going to make sure we, we get all this stuff up. And it's, it's all coming from you. So, yeah. Ooh. I'm ready. Bye, have a good night. Bye. Hey Z. Yes. How you, how you feeling? I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good. Because I'm feeling like, I, my, my turban got snatched. I got red <laughs> like a book. I need to do some Googling. I feel like I gotta do, gotta set aside extra reading for this understanding of the law and policy and what does what, which is important. So I am going to do that, but like it, it, this is, this, I feel like our conversations are always great, but this one is, this was right. This came at the right time. Mm -hmm. It was much needed. And yeah. Whew. I feel like we're always on time. Like our, our segments, mm -hmm. I feel like, and I'm super excited just for the other conversations we have planned coming up, everything. I just feel like everything we're doing here and that we're saying are in great alignment. Mm -hmm. And yeah, literally, I, I feel like we we are charged. Like having that historical piece from Judith was really important. That was so and, important. Yeah. I hope y'all caught that. Y'all didn't. Yeah. Y all, y all, y all, you had no right. Yeah. Like, I, our vote has always been suppressed. It was kind of like a, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, hold on. I mean, like we, I, you know that, but when someone actually says something out loud for you, it it registers differently. You're like, we didn't have the right to vote. That's that is that is step one in voter suppression, just not having the right to do so. Like, it's true. There's that. Oh, so, all right, know? guys. This is we yeah. been here for a minute. We go ahead and we're gonna transition. Yeah. To, uh, to what we going? What we use, going? use minute. Excuse me. Okay, I'm making a. All right, y'all. So, as y'all, as I've said uh, online, on Instagram, a few places, I, for, for my health, for my mental health, uh, and for other reasons, personal reasons, things that I ways in which I want to move my research, um, understanding myself, my history better. I made a big decision, and I moved. Um, uh, I moved, I did move. It's a big, it was a big move to Bermuda. Now, whether that is going to be a longer stay or a shorter stay, depending on what happens, um, with our university, uh, regardless, I took this time to at least spend the next four to five months, um, on, in the island of Bermuda. I'm not really sure about that language, but so I am here. So my, <laughs> so my new things is my relocation. So yes, I, Survived my first hurricane. Her name was Paulette. House made it. Island still standing. It was just a little. It was just a little breeze. That's what, that's what they say here. It was just a little breeze. Um, uh, Teddy looks like he's gonna just you know miss Bermuda altogether. So Monday, I think we might still get some strong wind. So I'm learning a lot about what it means to like prepare for a hurricane and like hurricane season like I've heard of these things but I never lived like down in the United States where hurricanes are really um 
whichever. I hope everyone not in Alabama, everybody's safe. Hope your family's safe. If you got any any folks out there, I check on my family. They're all doing well. But it's something I ever had to actually the idea of like prepare for, like go out and buy sand, make sure that the doors and shutters and things are boarded up. So, uh, but yeah, so I'm staying as safe as I can. But I would say like this, this even just being here, I went. You guys, I went to the beach yesterday and saw the ocean, and I swear I was immediately, I actually took a little dip. I was like immediately rejuvenated. Um, the ocean is something that is very uh, uh, strong. I would say it's a very, it's a powerful source in my life. Um, and it's something that I need to get to um, often. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of folks feel this way too, but for me, it's something that I need. So being able to go to the beach yesterday it really, I, I feel like my head is clear. I see the steps I need to take with this this degree and these papers and this, and all these things I gotta make sure to get done what I need to get done in this space. Um, I, I, it's, it definitely feels clearer for me. So that is my new things, you know, my, oh, that's, it, that's my Q's minute. It's also a new thing. I'm, yeah. Oh, but I got some new things too. Anyway, so yeah, that's my relocation. That's my, that's my Q's minute. So AZ, what you got going on for A's uh minute? Uh, so usually for my minute, I usually introduce something that's like healing or something that's like good for the body, the soul, you know, all these different holistic healing things. But today I'm going to bring it back to tradition <laughs> and I am going to say tea. I'm going to talk about tea. Um, one of my friends bought me some tea this week. Um, I think it was like turmeric tea and well-rested tea from Trader Joe's and I'm just loving it and especially during this weather right now where it's really kind of getting like real fall out here y'all. Yesterday was like 50 degrees so I'm over here like sipping on some tea and it is it is it is warming to my soul so I just want to say that. Yeah, and I also I also feel like personally, or just I feel like just for you, the fact that it was also brought to you by a friend, I feel like that has an even stronger impact on it. Like it's like the tea is great, but like it was the thought behind getting this tea and who brought it and why they brought it for you also probably has an even like deeper impact on you than just than just drinking it. Like it was nourishment of your soul, and now it's <laughs> nourishment of like your actual body. Because you know, I saw the little. Flowers, flowers in the bag, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah, you know? First, oh, yeah, so my friend D, he knew I was having a rough week. So yeah, he got me flowers and like these cookies and two different types of tea. And I'm telling you, it was really rejuvenating. So as we move on to like our new things, I want to talk about our new shirts. Kiana has one too, but she decided to leave the country. So she'll get hers when she comes back. She but, swears she's not throwing shade about me leaving, but when I tell you this is the tone that she's had about this shirt the last five times she's mentioned it. The last, mind you, she showed me three things that, oh, well, you're not here to get it. Oh, I'm not sending it to you. You can wait till you come. Like, this is three, three, three different things, but it's okay. I'm going to wait for my shirt to show up. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it in next year's election because there's an election every year in some fashion. So I'm aware there's always time. There's always time. Okay. I guess I will potentially mail this to you, but anyway, so this shirt, um, I'm supporting a college friend and her Instagram where she's selling the shirts is on queer.vibes underscore shop. I'll put it in our comments so that you can go and buy one too. And it just, this shirt was literally like right on time for our new things. And also, it was right on time that the Black Vote Matters and our topic, it says Black Votes Matter. Like, oh, hi. <laughs> there we go. I'm unmuted. No, so, so in this space of island living, my new things is my newest best friend. Notice oh, Bay right here. That bay gone, you know, can you see it? Can you see it? It is the most, y'all, they need this in the U.S. You talk about a, a roach or a water bug, dead. Instant. Bay gone is where it's at. Y'all need some, let me know. I can put some in the mail for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because this is it. This is my new team. This is my new best friend. 
keeps all of the water bugs and, and other things that live on islands away. So, baby, they gone. <laughs> That's my new thing. <laughs> no, it really saves lives, guys. Legit. You're so funny. Okay, so um, for our last piece, we just want to let you know what our next month's topic is. And our next month's topic is what are you celebrating this month? We really, we, <laughs> we really haven't solidified. We're not sure if that's really what we're going to continue to stick to. But October is like a plethora of celebrations and things happening. Yep. It's LGBT History Month. It's Celebrating Bilingual Child Month. It's dile um, Dyslexia Awareness Month. It's Global Diversity Month. And we already have a guest, but I'm not going to tell you who that guest is, but just know he's phenomenal and he is in all of the areas that we mentioned prior. Isn't it also ADHD Awareness Month? I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, we have a whole list. We're, we're just going to touch on some of, some of them. Yeah, like it's a list. I, just Google celebrations of October. And then when we come to the comments, let us know exactly which, which, which celebration you are a part of. Because that's what it's, it's like a whole, it's like a whole thing, guys. I'm excited about it. I feel like I'm going to like make a list. And then like, these are all the things I'm celebrating this month. And then pick a day to do it. Um, but, but no, I think it's going to be a really fun topic. Our guest is so, like, yeah, I'm excited for y'all to, to learn who that is. Uh, soon come, <laughs> soon come, soon come. But, y'all, okay, we are going to go ahead and get out of here. We want to yeah. leave y'all with uh, a few, what is it, with takeaways? What is it? What's our call to action? What's our call to action, AZ? It's register to vote, girl. Register, <laughs> register to vote. Register, so, to vote, register. Yes, to cash up a black woman. Cash up a black woman. Um, also, keep sipping. And also remember to share, like, and subscribe. Yes. All right. Okay, we'll see y'all next month. Bye.